Are you tired of feeling defeated and discouraged by failure? Are you ready to transform your setbacks into stepping stones towards success? In this video, we will explore the profound teachings of Buddhism and learn how to master the art of turning failure into victory. Lesson 1. Shift Your Mindset The first step in transforming failure into success is to shift our mindset. In Buddhism, we are taught that suffering arises from our attachment to desires and expectations. When we encounter failure, it is often because we have become too attached to a particular outcome. Limiting beliefs are the thoughts and ideas that we hold about ourselves, others, and the world, which constrain and restrict our potential and our possibilities. For example, we may believe that we are not smart enough, not talented enough, or not lucky enough to achieve our goals. Or, we may believe that the world is a harsh and unforgiving place, where only the strong and the ruthless can succeed. These limiting beliefs and assumptions are often based on our past experiences and conditioning, and they can be very persistent and resistant to change. However, if we wish to transform failure into victory, we must learn to recognize and challenge these beliefs, and to replace them with more empowering and expansive ones. One way to do this is to practice mindfulness and self-awareness. By paying attention to our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, and by examining them with curiosity and compassion, we can gain valuable insights into our limiting beliefs and assumptions, and we can begin to question and challenge them. Another way to challenge our limiting beliefs is to seek out new experiences and perspectives. By exposing ourselves to different people, places, and ideas, and by engaging in activities and challenges that are outside of our comfort zone, we can broaden our horizons and our understanding and we can discover new and more empowering beliefs and assumptions. A growth mindset is a way of thinking and approaching the world, which emphasizes learning, development, and progress, rather than fixed and unchangeable traits and abilities. In contrast to a fixed mindset, which assumes that our intelligence, our talents, and our potential are largely determined by our genes and our upbringing, a growth mindset recognizes that these qualities are malleable and can be developed and improved through effort, practice, and experience. A growth mindset also values and embraces challenges and setbacks as opportunities to learn, to grow, and to improve. Rather than avoiding or fearing failure, a growth mindset sees failure as a natural and necessary part of the learning and development process, and it encourages us to persevere and to learn from our mistakes. To cultivate a growth mindset, we must first recognize and challenge our fixed mindset beliefs and assumptions. For example, we may believe that we are either a math person or a non-math person, and that our ability to learn and to excel in math is largely determined by our innate talents and abilities. By examining and questioning these beliefs, and by seeking out new experiences and perspectives, we can begin to develop a more growth-oriented and expansive view of ourselves and our potential. Next, we must also learn to embrace and to value challenges and setbacks. Rather than seeing them as threats or obstacles, we must learn to see them as opportunities to learn, to grow, and to improve. By doing so, we can develop the resilience and the perseverance that we need to overcome failure and to achieve our goals. We should also remember the teachings of impermanence and interdependence in Buddhism. Impermanence is the understanding that everything in life, including ourselves, our thoughts, and our experiences, is subject to change and transformation. By recognizing and embracing this truth, we can cultivate a more flexible and adaptable mindset, and we can learn to respond to the ups and downs of life with greater ease and grace. Lesson 2. Embrace Self-Reflection In Buddhism, Self-reflection is considered an essential practice for spiritual growth and development. It is a process of examining our thoughts, emotions, and actions, and gaining a deeper understanding of who we are and what motivates us. When we experience failure, it can be tempting to blame external circumstances or other people for our misfortunes. However, this approach only serves to perpetuate our suffering and hinder our progress. Instead, 
We must learn to take responsibility for our actions and to examine our own minds and hearts with honesty and compassion. One powerful tool for self-reflection in Buddhism is the practice of mindfulness meditation. By sitting in stillness and focusing our attention on our breath or a particular object, we can cultivate a state of calm and clarity, which allows us to observe our thoughts and emotions without judgment or attachment. Through mindfulness meditation, we can begin to notice patterns and tendencies in our minds, such as our habitual reactions to failure and adversity. For example, we may notice that we tend to become defensive and angry when we are criticized, or that we tend to give up and lose motivation when we encounter obstacles. By becoming aware of these patterns and tendencies, we can then take steps to transform them and to cultivate more positive and constructive states of mind. For example, we can practice the quality of patience and perseverance by reminding ourselves that true and lasting success often requires many years of dedicated and consistent effort. Another important aspect of self-reflection in Buddhism is the practice of self-compassion. In our society, we are often taught to be harsh and critical towards ourselves, to constantly strive for perfection and success. However, this approach only serves to create more suffering and stress in our lives. We are taught to treat ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we would offer to a dear friend. By embracing self-compassion, we can cultivate a more loving and forgiving relationship with ourselves, which will empower us to overcome failure and achieve our goals. One powerful practice for self-compassion in Buddhism is the practice of loving-kindness meditation. By sitting in stillness and generating feelings of warmth and kindness towards ourselves and others, we can cultivate a state of openness and connection, which allows us to see ourselves and our failures in a more compassionate and understanding light. Self-reflection in Buddhism is not only about examining our own minds and hearts, but also about seeking guidance and inspiration from wise and compassionate teachers. In the Buddhist tradition, there are many stories and teachings of great masters who have faced failure and adversity and who have emerged victorious through their wisdom and their compassion. By studying and reflecting on these teachings and stories, we can gain a fresh perspective on our own situation and discover new strategies for overcoming obstacles. Moreover, we can also cultivate a sense of gratitude and appreciation for the support and encouragement that we receive from others, which will further enrich our lives and our spiritual journey. Lesson three, learn from others. We are all connected and our successes and failures are not solely our own, but are also influenced by the actions and the wisdom of others. To master the art of turning failure into victory, we must learn to seek out and to learn from the experiences and the insights of others. This means that we should be willing to ask for help and guidance, to listen to the advice and the feedback of our teachers and our mentors and to be open to new ideas and perspectives. We should also remember the teachings of the three jewels of Buddhism, the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. The Buddha represents the ideal of enlightenment and the path to achieve it. The Dharma is the teachings and the practices of Buddhism, and the Sangha is the community of Buddhists who support and inspire each other on their spiritual journey. By seeking out and connecting with the three jewels, we can gain access to a wealth of knowledge, wisdom, and support, which will help us to overcome failure and to achieve our goals. For example, we can attend Dharma talks and workshops where we can learn from experienced and knowledgeable teachers, and where we can also connect with other like-minded individuals. We can also read and study Buddhist texts and books, which can provide us with a deeper and more nuanced understanding of the teachings and the practices of Buddhism. We can also seek out and connect with a mentor or a spiritual friend who can provide us with personalized guidance and support and who can also help us to stay accountable and motivated on our journey. However, it is important to remember that learning from others is not a passive or a one-time process. It requires active and ongoing effort and engagement, and it also requires us to be discerning and to evaluate the advice and the feedback that we receive in light of our own experiences and our own understanding of the Dharma. For example, we can reflect on and journal about the insights and the lessons that we have learned from others, 
and we can also discuss and debate these ideas with our mentors and our spiritual friends. By doing so, we can deepen our understanding and our integration of these ideas, and we can also develop our own unique and authentic perspective on the teachings and the practices of Buddhism. Learning from others is not only beneficial for our own success and our own spiritual journey, but it is also an opportunity to practice and to cultivate the qualities of generosity, compassion, and gratitude. For example, we can express our gratitude and our appreciation to our teachers and our mentors by offering them small gifts or tokens of our appreciation, or by simply thanking them for their time and their wisdom. We can also practice generosity by sharing our own experiences and insights with others, and by supporting and inspiring them on their own journey. Lesson 4. Focus on progress, not perfection. Buddhism teaches us that the pursuit of perfection is a futile and unrealistic endeavor. In fact, it is often our obsession with perfection that leads to failure and disappointment. To transform failure into victory, we must learn to focus on progress rather than perfection. We may believe that we must be flawless, that every step we take must be executed with absolute precision, and that anything less than perfection is a failure. However, this mindset is not only unrealistic, but it can also be detrimental to our progress and our well-being. In Buddhism, we are taught that the nature of life is impermanence, and that everything is subject to change. This includes ourselves, our abilities, and our circumstances. Therefore, it is essential that we adopt a mindset of continuous growth and improvement, rather than one of fixed and unattainable perfection. To focus on progress, Rather than perfection, we must first learn to embrace our imperfections and our mistakes. In Buddhism, we are taught that mistakes are not only inevitable, but they are also valuable opportunities for learning and growth. By acknowledging and accepting our mistakes, we can gain a deeper understanding of our strengths and weaknesses, and we can identify the areas that need improvement. We should also cultivate a sense of self-compassion and self-forgiveness. In Buddhism, we are taught to treat ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we would offer to a dear friend. By embracing self-compassion, we can create a more supportive and nurturing environment for our growth and our progress, and we can also reduce the negative impact of perfectionism on our well-being. Another essential aspect of focusing on progress, rather than perfection, is to set realistic and achievable goals for ourselves. In Buddhism, we are taught that the middle way is a path of moderation and balance, which avoids the extremes of indulgence and austerity. By applying the middle way to our goal setting, we can avoid the pitfalls of perfectionism and burnout, and instead, create a sustainable and fulfilling journey towards our aspirations. To set realistic and achievable goals, we must first identify our values and our priorities, and then, align our goals with them. In Buddhism, we are taught that true and lasting happiness is not derived from external sources, such as wealth, fame, or power, but from the cultivation of inner qualities, such as wisdom, compassion, and mindfulness. By aligning our goals with our values and our priorities, we can ensure that our progress and our success are meaningful and fulfilling, and that they contribute to our overall well-being and happiness. Next. We must also break down our goals into smaller and more manageable tasks or milestones. In Buddhism, we are taught that the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, and that small and consistent actions can lead to significant and lasting results. By breaking down our goals into smaller tasks or milestones, we can maintain our motivation and our momentum, and we can also track and measure our progress which will further enhance our sense of accomplishment and self-efficacy. We should also celebrate and appreciate our progress, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem. In Buddhism, we are taught that gratitude and appreciation are two powerful and transformative qualities, which enable us to recognize the blessings and the opportunities in our lives, and to respond to them with joy and enthusiasm. By celebrating and appreciating our progress, we can increase our motivation and our confidence, and we can also create a more positive and uplifting environment, which will support our growth and our success. 
It is essential that we remain flexible and adaptable in our pursuit of progress and success. In Buddhism, we are taught that the nature of life is impermanence, and that everything is subject to change. This includes our goals, our abilities, and our circumstances. Therefore, it is crucial that we remain open and receptive to new ideas and perspectives, and that we are willing to adjust and modify our goals and our strategies as needed. Lesson 5. Develop Grit and Resilience The cultivation of grit and resilience is closely related to the development of the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path. The Four Noble Truths teach us that suffering is an inevitable part of life, that it arises from our attachment to desires and expectations, that it can be overcome, and that the Eightfold Path is the way to achieve this. The Eightfold Path, in turn, provides us with a comprehensive and holistic framework for transforming failure into victory. It consists of eight interrelated and interdependent factors, which are Right understanding This factor refers to our ability to see things as they really are, without distortion or bias. In the context of failure, right understanding means that we should not exaggerate or minimize the significance of our setbacks, but rather, we should view them as opportunities for growth and learning. Right intention This factor refers to our motivation and our purpose in life. In the context of failure, right intention means that we should not be driven by fear or anger, but rather, we should be guided by a strong and unwavering commitment to our goals and our values. Right speech This factor refers to our ability to communicate effectively and compassionately with others. In the context of failure, right speech means that we should not blame or criticize others, but rather, we should seek their support and their guidance, and we should express our gratitude and appreciation for their help. Right action. This factor refers to our ability to act skillfully and ethically in the world. In the context of failure, right action means that we should not resort to dishonest or unethical means to achieve our goals, but rather, we should persevere and we should strive to improve our skills and our knowledge. Right Livelihood This factor refers to our ability to earn a living in a way that is harmonious with our values and our aspirations. In the context of failure, right livelihood means that we should not compromise our integrity or our dignity for the sake of financial gain, but rather, we should seek a career or vocation that is meaningful and fulfilling. Right Effort this factor refers to our ability to apply ourselves diligently and consistently to our goals and our aspirations. In the context of failure, right effort means that we should not give up or become complacent, but rather, we should maintain our motivation and our momentum, and we should strive to overcome the obstacles and the challenges that we encounter. Right Mindfulness This factor refers to our ability to be fully present and aware of our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions. In the context of failure, right mindfulness means that we should not be preoccupied with the past or the future, but rather, we should focus on the present moment, and we should cultivate a sense of clarity, calmness, and stability. Right concentration. This factor refers to our ability to focus our mind on a single object or task, and to maintain that focus, even in the face of distractions and obstacles. In the context of failure, Right concentration means that we should not be easily discouraged or distracted, but rather, we should cultivate a sense of determination, perseverance, and resilience. By following the Eightfold Path and by cultivating the Four Noble Truths, we can develop the grit and the resilience that we need to overcome failure and to achieve success. Moreover, we can also create a more positive and uplifting environment, which will support our growth and our spiritual journey. Lesson 6. Turn Negativity into Positivity To turn negativity into positivity, we must first recognize and acknowledge the clashes that are present in our minds. This requires a deep level of self-awareness and an honest assessment of our thoughts and emotions. By doing so, we can begin to understand the root causes of our negativity and take steps to address them. One powerful tool for addressing negativity is the practice of metta or loving-kindness meditation. In this practice, 
we cultivate a deep sense of compassion and kindness towards ourselves and others. We repeat phrases such as, May I be happy. May I be healthy. May I be at peace and extend these wishes to all beings. By doing so, we can begin to counteract the klesha of hatred and cultivate a more positive and loving mindset. We can also use metta to forgive ourselves for our failures and mistakes and to develop a more compassionate and understanding relationship with ourselves. Another tool for turning negativity into positivity is the practice of mindfulness. In Buddhism, mindfulness is the ability to be fully present and aware of our thoughts, emotions, and actions in the moment. By practicing mindfulness, we can develop a greater sense of clarity and insight into our minds and our lives. When we experience failure, it is common for our minds to become clouded with negative thoughts and emotions. By practicing mindfulness, we can begin to see these thoughts and emotions for what they are, temporary and fleeting phenomena that do not define us or our worth. We can also use mindfulness to cultivate a more positive and optimistic mindset. By focusing our attention on the present moment and the opportunities and possibilities that it holds, we can begin to shift our perspective and see failure not as a defeat, but as a stepping stone towards success. By recognizing and accepting this truth, we can begin to let go of our attachment to negativity and cultivate a more resilient and adaptable mindset. We can also use the concept of impermanence to remind ourselves that failure is not a permanent or unchangeable state, but rather a temporary and fleeting experience that can be overcome and transformed. Another teaching that can help us turn negativity into positivity is the concept of karma. In Buddhism, karma is the law of cause and effect, which states that our actions and intentions have a direct impact on our lives and our spiritual journey. By recognizing and understanding the law of karma, we can begin to see failure not as a punishment or a sign of our unworthiness, but rather as a result of our past actions and intentions. We can also use the law of karma to motivate ourselves to cultivate more positive and wholesome actions and intentions, which will lead to greater success and happiness in the future. We can turn negativity into positivity by cultivating a sense of gratitude and appreciation. In Buddhism, gratitude is seen as a powerful and transformative quality, which enables us to recognize the blessings and the opportunities in our lives and to respond to them with joy and enthusiasm. By cultivating gratitude, we can begin to shift our perspective on failure and see it not as a loss or a defeat, but rather as an opportunity for growth and learning. We can also use gratitude to remind ourselves of the many blessings and the support that we have in our lives, which will further enrich our lives and our spiritual journey. Lesson 7. Find Inspiration Inspiration is the fuel that drives us forward, even when the road ahead is uncertain or challenging. In Buddhism, we are taught that inspiration can come from many sources, and that by tapping into these sources, we can increase our resilience, creativity, and determination. One of the most powerful sources of inspiration is our own experiences and insights. In Buddhism, we are encouraged to engage in regular self-reflection and introspection, to examine our thoughts, emotions, and actions, and to gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. By doing so, we can uncover valuable insights and lessons, which can inspire and guide us in our journey towards success. For example, we can reflect on a past failure or setback and ask ourselves, what did I learn from this experience? How did it shape me or change me? What new opportunities or perspectives did it open up? By doing so, we can transform our failures into sources of inspiration and wisdom, and we can use them to fuel our future success. Another powerful source of inspiration is the wisdom and compassion of our teachers and mentors. In Buddhism, we are taught that the guidance and support of a wise and compassionate teacher is essential for our spiritual growth and development. The same is true for our journey towards success. By seeking out the advice and guidance of experienced and successful individuals, we can gain valuable insights and perspectives, which can inspire and motivate us. We can also find inspiration in the stories and experiences of others, 
especially those who have faced and overcome similar challenges and obstacles. In Buddhism, we are taught that the lives and the teachings of the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas, who are enlightened beings who have dedicated their lives to the service of others, can serve as powerful and inspiring examples for us to follow. By learning about their lives and their teachings, we can gain a deeper understanding of the qualities and the strategies that are needed to overcome failure and to achieve success, such as compassion, wisdom, courage, and perseverance. Moreover, we can also cultivate a sense of gratitude and appreciation for their guidance and support, which will further enrich our lives and our spiritual journey. We can also find inspiration in the beauty and the wonder of the natural world. In Buddhism, we are taught that the natural world is a manifestation of the interconnectedness and the harmony of all things, and that by contemplating and appreciating its beauty, we can gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. For example, we can take a walk in the woods or by the ocean and observe the changing of the seasons, the movement of the waves, or the growth of the trees. By doing so, we can cultivate a sense of awe and wonder, which can inspire and uplift us, and which can also remind us of the impermanence and the interdependence of all things, including our own successes and failures. We can also find inspiration in the arts and the culture, such as music, poetry, or painting. In Buddhism, we are taught that the arts and the culture are expressions of the human spirit, and that by engaging with them, we can gain a deeper understanding of ourselves and the world around us. For example, we can listen to a piece of music that resonates with us, or we can read a poem or a book that speaks to our heart. By doing so, we can tap into the power of the arts and the culture to inspire and uplift us, and to also remind us of the beauty and the richness of the human experience, including our own journey towards success. However, to truly find and tap into these sources of inspiration, we must first cultivate a sense of openness and receptivity. This means that we should be willing to explore new ideas and perspectives, to listen to the stories and the experiences of others, and to appreciate the simple and the profound moments of our lives. For example, we can practice mindfulness and meditation, which are powerful and transformative practices that enable us to cultivate a sense of calmness, clarity, and openness. By doing so, we can increase our chances of finding inspiration and motivation. And we can also create a more positive and uplifting environment, which will support our success and our spiritual journey. We should also cultivate a sense of gratitude and appreciation. In Buddhism, we are taught that gratitude and appreciation are two powerful and transformative qualities, which enable us to recognize the blessings and the opportunities in our lives and to respond to them with joy and enthusiasm. For example, we can practice the gratitude journal, which is a simple and effective practice that involves writing down three things that we are grateful for each day. By doing so, we can increase our chances of finding inspiration and motivation and we can also create a more positive and uplifting environment, which will support our success and our spiritual journey. May we all be inspired and motivated by the wisdom and the compassion of the Buddha, and may we all master the art of turning failure into victory for the benefit of ourselves and of all beings.